I went right to Drake. Okay. I talked, I talked to him. I talked to him in Charlotte a couple weeks ago. Asked about the footwork, which was one of the things he talked about. Yeah. With you in the conversation before you took the job in Liverpool, mm -hmm. was points of emphasis. What have you seen with him as far as improving his footwork? Yeah. I, you know, the thing about, I think that's important for any quarterback is to is to have his feet in the ground when it's time to throw it. And and therefore, you know, we tried to uh, narrow some things down in the spring or say, hey, we're gonna we're gonna do this footwork for this concept or whatever, and make sure that we did that and repeated that every time. Now, we all know with the bullets start flying, guys very rarely get to set their feet and throw on spot, and he's really good at throwing on the move. But, you know, we just felt like, hey, let's put some uh, some definition according to the concepts we're throwing and uh, and really make sure that we're in a great spot to throw the ball, use the ground as leverage, and be able to, to get the ball out on time. And I think Drake has really worked hard. Uh, we've looked at a couple different ways from a stance and drop standpoint. Uh, the number one thing is I want him most comfortable and whatever he's comfortable doing. If you watch the best in the world, the Pat Mahomes or, or Aaron Rodgers or whoever, they're both they both do it a little different. Uh, not to say that one way is the right way all the time, but uh, I really like the progress I'm making. Drake's uh, he's really uh, a guy that's driven. He wants to improve in every bit of his game. So when you give him something to work on, he's going to do it, and he'll give you great feedback. And I think that's important. But uh, I like what I see so far, and his footwork in our run game is different as well, and that's been important. You know, if you're going to throw RPOs and do some things, we got to make sure that you're in a position to do that. So I like the progress he's making. Uh, be you know after practice every day you look at the film and you're grading him on it and I think he's doing a great job. So oh, when, when you have the improved footwork mm -hmm. with him specifically where do you see it play? Like, what is the end result of the improved footwork? Is it certain kinds of throws? Is it all throws? Is it yeah. how he goes through his progression? I think for me, it's more about that the ball comes out on time. Because I think sometimes quarterbacks, when their footwork's not clean or or they don't understand what footwork maybe goes with what uh, drop, you know, with what um, uh, concept in the progression or whatever, that's what I'm looking at. Does the ball come out on time? I mean, you know, when I was I was a high school baseball coach and everybody had their, their way you teach hitting, right? hey, hold it this way, get this arm up, whatever it is. But if a guy could stand on his head and hit, you let him do that, right, if he's hitting 500. So, uh, you know, but the one thing the one thing I saw is that, or I felt like in some of the things that we're doing, even all the stuff that's held over from, from previous seasons, is that if we could get it clean just a little bit, from my standpoint, the ball would come out on time. And I think that's the determining factor in any of that. How have you seen the improvement of the running game change from last year to this year just by having British Brooks back? Yeah, well, we hadn't played a game yet, so I hadn't well, seen that. Yet, practice, but, I guess, and how you know, been. and not being here last year, I really don't know, other than the fact I really like British. I think uh, you can tell he's a veteran guy. I mean, he is uh, obviously very compact, and, and uh, but he's got really good speed as well. But the thing I've been most impressed with are his vision. I think he's got great vision. He understands the run game and where his eyes need to be every time he gets the football. And then uh, I think his route running has been excellent. He may be one of the better route runners in that group. So I think he's an all person purpose back. He, uh, he can do a lot of things. Uh, man, he, he looks really good. He's not, you know, I know he got injured last year and uh, he, I don't see any signs of that and I really like the progress he's making. Being, so, one, of, being one of the key veterans of the group, is there things that Drake is learning from him or how has their chemistry been improving? You know, I think so. I think their chemistry is great. I think, I know when I first got here, Drake told me, he said, that guy right there because he was over there injured on the side when I first got here and he's like, that guy right there is a really good player. He'll get back healthy. You'll like him. And I think Drake was dead on and um, yeah, I think Drake's Drake's doing a great job of leading this team, leading the offense for sure. You know, just uh, you know, I think he picks and chooses and knows the right time to say something. I think now that he's played a full season, you know, he's in that role where he can be a little more vocal, and that's what we're looking for out of him. Say on the running backs, yeah. have you been around you know a running back room that's as deep as it is right now? Obviously, there's a big competition going on. Uh, you know, when I was at Southern Miss, we had two NFL running backs. They both ran for a thousand. That was back in 2015 in the same season, and and then we had another guy, a third guy that was a good player uh, that ended up playing after I left. And yeah, I mean, I think it's similar to that. And the one thing that is common to me everywhere I've been is, you know, you need multiple backs to be able to play. I mean, the season's a grind. The season's long. Uh, we're on, we're going to be really physical in running the football or attempting to run the football. So we need guys that can hold up. And you, you know, one guy's not going to do it anymore. 
and I think that's important. And I like the depth in that room. They all have things to improve on, just like we do as coaches. But uh, I like the direction that room's headed. Talk some about British. Who are some of the other mm -hmm. running backs that have impressed you so far? Well, Amarian Hampton is, is is a guy that sticks out. I think I think he's a guy that that obviously uh, is, is is a young player still learning in some aspects. I really like the way he's improved in his pass protection. That's been that's been excellent. I think um, you know he's doing a better job of understanding the different looks and who to block and so forth. Uh, I think Elijah Green is a really good running back as well. He does a great job. He's solid, uh, really smart, really intelligent, does a great job in, in all the aspects. I think, you know, when you look at those, and then, you know, you got Caleb that, that's getting back, and I think, you know, when you got four guys that have played some, you know, it's that right balance you're looking for. And I think that's something we're still looking for with those guys. George is also a change-up guy who also can play in the slot. So, uh, like I said, I think we're going to need every one of them before the season's over. I think that's in, something that's a given, and uh, I like that room. I really do. Was that the main thing, Chip, that Lamorian had to improve about his game was the the pass blocking? Because, I mean, he's such a physical yeah. specimen. No. I think that is that's a huge part of it. You know, when you got you know, you know, when you throw it like we're like we have and we're going to, uh, you got to feel really confident that, that the pass protection is going to be done right. And I think as a young player coming into college football, sometimes that's a struggle for guys early on, depending on what system they came out of high school. But I also think his improved where his eyes need to be in a run game. When he gets the handoff, you know, where should his eyes be? You know, we're running this play; it needs to be here. We're running another play; it needs to be here. Now it's an odd front. Now my eyes need to be in a different spot. And I think those. Those are the things that, that some guys catch on very quickly. Some guys, it takes a little time. And uh, like we all, we all mature at different times. So I like his progress. Coach Porter's doing a great job with him. That is something that, just to follow up on that, sorry, yeah. Michael, that's something we had heard that his head was down too much in terms of Omarion uh, and his vision. Was that something you, um, you tried to correct with, yeah. with where he's seeing where things develop? Well, I think there's a fine line. I think that's attributed to his eyes being in the right place on the run scheme. You know, who, who, where does my eyes go? Do, my, do I read this guy? Do I read this guy? And then, but at the end of the day, if it's cloudy, you know, we want him to bang it in there. We want to run through the smoke, so to speak, like a NASCAR driver when things happen, you know, we kind to use that analogy and uh, so I think he took that to heart I think he tries to get vertical tries to get up the field which is good and the more he plays I think the better he'll improve in that area or the more he'll improve. Uh, Chip with the receivers obviously tends to a unique situation but what have you seen from the other uh, group of receivers that has impressed you? Yeah we got a solid group I think they're still they're competing every day that's good when you got a lot of guys in the mix so to speak uh, you know I think you know, Nate McCollum stands out to me as a guy that's kind of really consistent every day. He's kind of the same guy, uh, very, very detailed route runner that catches the ball. I think Kobe Pacers had a really good couple days. I think uh, I like his progress, and he's versatile, can play in a lot of spots. Uh, I think Gavin's made some plays. Another veteran guy that's played a lot of snaps that can move around. I think that room is, is impressive. And, and the one thing about that room is every day you got to go out and compete. Again, it's similar to the running back room. Lonnie's got a lot of bodies in there that have played some, and you're going to need them. Again, you got you get banged up. You got you know you can play a lot of snaps. You can play with tempo. They're going to get gas some. So we got to we got to try to make sure that we're too deep at every all three of those positions. You, so you've been in college coaching a long time. You brought a test. And have you been around? A eligibility case quite like that before and just how frustrating is that not you know getting ready for a season and not knowing his available well we're, we're full speed with him i mean we feel like we got a, you know a great case and we're going to let the people that handle that handle that and uh, i just think at the end of the day um you know you gotta you gotta look at you know make a make a, a kind of a common sense decision and uh, if you blanket everything and and really just make a decision based on that that's my opinion is that uh, are you really doing what's right for for kids you know I mean, not, not just at our school, but any other school. And, and I get where, where all that's coming from. But, hey, we're full speed ahead with him. We don't play for three more weeks, and we feel like if things are going to work out, we're in a great spot. You and Matt Brown talk a lot about the maturity of Drake Man. It's been a topic mm. forever. Yeah. But uh, do you ever find that it's he needs a little reminder to kind of just forget all the buzz, the highest mechanics, mm -hmm. being one of the top quarterbacks in the nation? All that stuff. Or is he able to block all that all constantly? You, you know, it's interesting. I just think if you know him, his personality, uh, I, I never see any sign that anything like that affects him in any way, good or bad. I mean, he's a he's a he's he's just a normal guy. He comes to, to, to meetings and practice every day, locked in and focused, trying to improve and get better. If you, All the individual drills we do and all those things, he does them full speed. He's trying to improve. Like, he's a guy that I think has got a you know, very mature mind and, and doesn't let his mind drift. And uh, I've not seen him yet 
come to a day and not be ready to practice. And I think it says a lot with, like you said, all the things that, that you hear about him. Uh, if I guess, he probably doesn't even doesn't react to a lot of that. And uh, I don't ever see it show up for sure in, in our in our meetings and practice. How is Connor uh, handling done with mm -hmm. consistency? Yeah. I know Mac said before, his high end is pretty high. Yeah. It's a matter of being consistent. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he's been, he's improved. I, I You know, I'm, I'm proud of him. I think he's made strides. Uh, not to say that he's a finished product yet, but like I know today he made a nice throw and in a in tight window. And I think you know another kid like Drake that's kind of level-headed, uh, wants to improve, wants to be better. I mean, he's focused on on his on football and, and trying to improve his game. Uh, he's a very smart guy already, but it's different when the ball snapped and, and the pieces are moving. And, and now it's this look, now it's that look. Uh, so I like the progress he's making, and he's got a great opportunity to learn under Drake. And uh, you know, I think hopefully you know obviously this this season we'll see how things play out but at the end of the day you know I think the future is bright for Connor. Chip uh, the passing game is kind of where UNC mm -hmm. found most of his success last mm -hmm. year I know one of your main emphasis is, is, is to you know get a, a run game going you right. establish a couple of backs that can you know really yeah. get a run game going how do you kind of strike that uh, balance between keeping up the success in that pass game while also having a reliable yeah game? that's a good question I think I think you know you know the best the best uh, answer to that you know as you look back and what what's happened what you've done in the past at different places and you know I mentioned Southern Miss we had the, the, in 15 we had the 2,000 yard rushers and a 4,000 yard passer if you had to write it out on paper and that's what you kind of look for because you got to balance and I think that's important and you know even the high school coach college coach doesn't matter our job is to get the ball to our best players and figure ways to do it and however that happens it happens and you know limit limit the uh, negative place you know to you know can't have penalties and you can't have turnovers and lost yardage plays TFLs and, and try to create explosive. That's the key to the game. And you do that by getting the ball to your best players. And however that balance plays out, it is. We're trying to win the game. For sure. And are there any kind of challenges that come with that? You know, because there's, you know, several guys that can make plays, but there's only mm -hmm. one football, you know, right. every play. So sure. what are kind of the, the challenges that come with that, making sure, you know, this yeah. guy gets the ball as often as possible? Yeah, it's, it's a challenge at times, I guess. But it's a it's a good challenge to have. And, and you know, I think, you know, the key for us is how, how do we get the ball to our best players in space? You know, what's the most productive way to do that each and every week it's different right because of the different defenses you're playing but we've got a great staff Lonnie Galloway's as good as I've been around as a wide receiver coach he's excellent a guy's been around in the same offense for a long time at other places as well very creative uh, Freddie Kitchens is very good with Clem uh, Randy Clements you know really with the run game and you got you got guys and veteran guys in that room that have done a nice job in their careers and you know our job is to build this offense the UNC 2023 offense and and uh, and we're still working through through that but uh i like the progress we're making and as you mentioned the challenge is to make sure we use the pieces as we can sure. as you as you sit down over the offseason and really dug into drake's like film and watched what he did last year what did you find yourself taking notes on? What did you find yourself yeah. seeing and noting? And then what did you try to translate into telling him, like just the, the coaching points? Well, uh, to me, the first thing that sticks out, and when I, we went to the bowl game, I was able to just stand on the sideline and kind of watch, oh, you right. know, because yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't involved in that one. And his playmaking ability, I think, off schedule, moving around in the pocket, making plays with his feet, but keeping his eyes up, he's got, I think he's got great instincts. And I think that's something I think that's really hard to teach. I've had a couple guys like that to have those kind of instincts they understand protections they understand where it might be leaking and what but at the same time they're keeping their eyes downfield so I was very impressed with his ability to make plays off schedule uh, I do think uh, you know also with him obviously you know he can make every throw I think and um, you know so that gives you some advantages as well and you know I think for the biggest thing for us is just continue to do the things that he's that he's comfortable with that he's good at that fit and that's really what we've done we hadn't really changed a whole lot from that standpoint is there a slogan or model that you or the offense or the players even have kind of said this is what we're going to say after every practice this year or before every game? Yeah, I mean, our deal is we want to be physical and fast and tough and that's mental and physical and, you know, we've, we've really tried to push that and, it, you know, trying to get that mindset because you know how this is. It's going to be a long season. It's hard. There's ups and downs and we got to be mentally tough as well as physically tough and we got to be physical at every position. That's old line running backs, uh, wide receivers, blocking on the perimeter, whatever we're doing. 
gentlemen, and I think that's an important emphasis for us. And I think if we'll if we'll take that approach every day, and, and really, and the other thing is not be satisfied. You know, play, uh, practice and play to the standard, and really try to try to improve each and every day. You can't go out and waste days. We just don't have the time to do that. And as coaches, we got to do the same thing. We got to coach better and get these guys going. We're all committed to that. And uh, you know, it, it, before before you know it, you're going to snap your fingers and we'll be ready to play. And we got to make sure our guys are prepared. Chip, one of those. One of the first times that we spoke to you when you first came to Carolina, yeah. you had mentioned that you weren't coming here to change the things that Matt Brown already had in place with right. the offense, but just to kind of adapt to it. Yeah. Um, is that something that you're still staying true to, or has there been changes that you've had to make since being here? So yeah, 100%. I mean, I think that's why Coach probably get, you know gave me this opportunity is because I had a similar background anyway from a pass game standpoint. And, you know, at the end of the day, you got to kind of do what we've been good at for sure, okay? And that's what Drake likes, and that's what he's been good at. Uh, although I'll tell you, he's, he's open to things and he takes coaching great and all that but you know at the same time I think we, we've, we've been pretty good on offense here so I think there's just little uh, subtle changes that you might see that, that are a little different but nothing nothing off the radar or anything. How close are you to getting where you need to be with depth in the offensive line? Yeah well, you know we're not there yet to be honest we, 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 got, we got some work to do uh, really all the way around as an offense just not from the standpoint of, of uh, a certain position group the O-line's part of it but we got to be more consistent that's what we're looking for and consistent Consistency, and uh, we talk about it every night. We put it up there and we show video. Okay, this is these are the things in practice today. This was good. This was not good. How do we make that bad tape, that not good tape, shorter and shorter and shorter? And what I mean by that is just any self-inflicted things where we, we, we miscommunicate or, or we get a holding penalty or we we get, we get a false start. You know, we got to eliminate that. And you can't play good football until you until you do those things. And that's an emphasis of ours. And uh, we got to you know every day we come off the field. I think we have to take an honest look at ourselves. I told the players this, and, you know, did we accomplish these things? Did we do it? How much does it mean to you to go out and play penalty free? You know, and I think the teams that do that and can run the ball a little bit and with the quarterback like we got, I think you're going to score points and you're going to have opportunities. But, you know, when you do that and shoot yourself in the foot, um, it, it really makes it hard. The defenses are too good and uh, we got we got to continue to work on that. Are the issues that you're describing, is that more with the white team trying to creep toward being in rotation? Yeah, I think. Is something that you're probably having with no, I think it's a mixture. We, we're still mixing some guys here and there, blue and white. You know, we do a depth chart every day and really try to move guys up and down, create that competition. And really, I just mean as an offense in general. You know, it really shouldn't matter if you're the third team guy or the first team guy. You should be able to go out there and run our base plays and, and really execute it from the standpoint of getting lined up and communicating it and, and blocking it or doing whatever your assignment is. And that's really what I mean as a unit, holding ourselves to that high standard, not be satisfied with, uh, with a missed opportunity even during practice. And I think that's what we're really focused on. Chip, I wonder if you will, uh, Diego Pounds, he's somebody that Mac is kind of talking about and needs to, you know, kind of get in that rotation. Yeah. He wants to bring him up more. What have you seen out of him so far? Well, he is a big human being and, and very, <laughs> I mean, very athletic, a uh, very likable guy. Again, I think consistency, he would tell you that's what he's looking to do as well as be more consistent. Mm -hmm. I think he's got a lot of talent. Uh, I think he's very, very talented. I just think, you know, for him, he's continuing to grow up, continuing to focus on his footwork and fundamentals. With, with Coach Clements and what he's trying to get them to do uh, and learning football. That's, that's so important. Hey, this technique, and now I do it this way. Now here's this technique, and I do it this way. And he needs to continue to grow. Very talented guy and uh, looking for him to mature each and every day. Chip, what, kind of, what kind of weapons can the tight ends be in mm -hmm. this offense? You were just saying first team, second team, third team guys. You're, right. I mean, you're loaded there. Right. Um, I, li I, I like our tight ends. Uh, didn't mean to cut you off. But nice. Love them. Uh, all three of them have played snaps. Uh, Bryce and Kobe. Hager, Kamari, they've, they've all played a lot of snaps. They're all versatile. I think they're all guys that will have an opportunity to play at the next level. Um, and it allows you to be a little more creative. It allows you to use some different personnel groups and a lot of things that go along with that. But the biggest thing is those guys, and I like the way they work too. I think they go out and, and work hard every day and uh, improve. And I think their versatility can make us uh, a really effective offense. And maybe, I mean, they got they got used a lot last year too, but could they even be more involved? I mean, like you're yeah. saying, there's only one football, but uh, yeah, uh, I mean, we, could they be even more involved? Well, I think I think we'll see how it plays out. I mean, I think that group maybe caught almost 80 balls last year. I mean, it was a, they 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 do a great job and they're versatile. Like I told you, and they can make plays. Uh, they're not just the old school tight end that can just line up and really can't you know uh, stretch the field. So uh, we'll see how it plays out. I think 
obviously it depends on uh, game plans and so forth. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to watching all three of them play. Are you going to be upstairs or on the field? Yeah, I'll probably be upstairs, okay. probably. When looking back at last year, mm -hmm. kind of looking over how the offense worked, uh -huh. is there anything you noticed that maybe led to the inconsistencies in the run game that you're trying to maybe fix or put maybe your touch on this year to improve it overall? You know, honestly, I haven't really. I mean, we're just really kind of focused on this year. I really hadn't looked back a whole lot, especially now, right? So, I, you know, for us, if good football still wins, right? We create explosive plays. No, no TFLs, no negative, no penalties. Uh, be good on third down, be good in the red zone. If we'll do those things, that's really what we're focused on. Can you talk some about just Corey Gator's veteran presence? Mm -hmm. and yeah, I love Corey. I think uh, Corey's, Corey's a guy that comes and works every day too. I do think he has a little some leadership ability up there. But like you said, because he's played a lot, uh, he's a guy that'll do whatever. He's eager. He's eager to learn. Uh, you know, I think I think he's he and Coach Clements have hit it off great, and uh, I like his progress. He's a tough guy. That uh, is going to give you everything he has, and uh, intelligent too. So I'm looking looking forward for him to have kind of his his his, his uh, a big breakout season. I'm assuming this is last year, probably right. I don't even know his age, really, but I know he's a veteran. He played a lot, so uh, I'll, I'll, it's impossible. <laughs> all kidding aside, I think I think I think his presence is felt every day. So I'm looking forward to him, and I and I I pushed him. Hey, you need to take that next step as a leader. Chip, at, at the first practice, we noticed on the on the blue offensive line, it was four veteran guys, and then Willie uh, Lampkin. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of? Yeah. Well, what have you seen from him that has earned him that confidence? Well, I wouldn't read too much into that because we do move him around, but Willie's going to play. Willie's a good football player. Uh, Willie, obviously, the more he's been here, he's become more and more confident, and, and he's, a, he's a guy that's really extremely tough, very strong, compact guy, does a great job with technique, uh, technique and fundamentals. Usually for him, they're spot on. Um, he's a guy that you're really glad you got because, he's, he's a, like I said, he's a veteran presence and just a smart football player. So I love what Willie brings to the table. He's going to have a huge role for us this year. We asked you earlier just about mm -hmm. your approach in terms of Tez Walker, you know, pending his eligibility. Yeah. Um, in your reaction just to the outpouring of support around him, you know, yeah. governors writing letters to the NCAA president. Right. Um, just what's your reaction? I think it says a lot. I mean, for, 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 the, for the support he's gotten. I mean, I, when you look at the facts of the case and the details of everything, I think that says a lot. And, you know, like I said, we're counting on him playing, man. We're looking forward to it. And, you know, I think that thing will work out. I think, uh, I think guys will We'll, we'll really take a look, and common sense will probably prevail on that. It looked like time for one more. Uh, this isn't going to be a record. It looked like. <laughs> <laughs> you will reload? <laughs> well, yeah, I will, actually, I will reload. I was going to ask about the running backs, but yeah. was, uh, was Drake's footwork average or bad? Or, like, what, where, where was his footwork? Before you guys started working on it, no, how would you rate it? I wouldn't rate it any of that. I think there's a lot of ways to do it. And I think he had done it a certain way, and I just felt like we were going to do it a little different. But I don't think it was good, bad, or average. I just think it was the way the way it was done then, and now we're just doing it the way we're doing it now. So I wouldn't say that. All right? Appreciate you guys. Thanks,